How you guys doing? Thank you for tuning in with me tonight. Or I guess it just depends on what time you're watching this. You guys can be watching this 10 years from now and it still helps you out. So it's, this is timeless information. All right, so tonight I wanna to talk about two things that you should be investing in in this life. The average lifespan is about 70 something years. There are two things that you should invest in in this life. And one, the first one that you should invest in, you should invest in the kingdom of God. Lay your treasures for heaven, all right? That's the end game, lay all your treasures for heaven. All right, and the second thing I wanna talk about that you should invest in, you should invest in yourself, all right? Always try to improve in life, always try to go to the next level and walk around and do things with a spirit of excellence. But let's get into it, because this is, uh, I think this is a good teaching here. Uh, I'll try to keep this <laughs> under 10 minutes. Uh, I think 10 minutes or under, I should be able to get what I need to say out. All right. So the first one, you need to invest in the kingdom of heaven, invest in God. Uh, you lay up your treasures in heaven and not on earth. All right. So let me read this Bible verse to you and then we'll get going. It's Matthew 6, 19, 19 through 21. I'm, I'm reading from the New International Version. Uh, it says, do not, store up yourself, do not store for yourself treasures on earth where moths and vernon, ver, vermin destroy and where thieves break and steal. But store up yourself treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So, hypothetically, if you were a, a rich man, why would you want to just store up so much money and then you die? And what, what you gonna do with that, the riches? You gonna give it to all your family? Why not, you have all these, these riches and instead of thinking about generations and generations to come, hey, if you wanna take care of your family, that's fine. But I, I feel as though it's more important to do the work of God. So you have piles and piles and piles of money. You should be given. You, be, you should become a philanthropist. You should be doing things, helping people out, teaching people. That money should be a tool. All right? You can't. God gives us the capacity to be rich, but not a rich guy who is possessive, all right? This is how I believe money will work if you don't love it. Make the money and use the money as a tool, but don't love the money. And the Bible says the root of all, uh, money is the root of all evil. Money is the root of all evil. That's wrong. It's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Don't love your money. Because when you love something, it becomes a God. You indirectly and suggestively worship it. And there's only one God. And God said he's a jealous God. So it's okay to be rich. God, God wants you to, to uh, do all that you can. It, it speaks in Proverbs and in Ecclesiastes to just that, that you can become rich, that you, that you can become wealthy in this world. God, he said, God, he, he said he wished you shall prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So he wants you to prosper uh, physically. He wants you to prosper mentally, and he wants you to prosper spiritually. So God, just like I said in my last video, God has he doesn't have anything wrong with you becoming rich. He just it when it, when you when it becomes covetousness, that's when there's an issue when you start to love what you what you've acquired. But God wants you to use it as a tool to help people, to help his people. And the verse that he, uh, that when I asked the Holy Spirit to help me out with this, um, the verse that he told me that popped in my mind, it's funny how the Holy Spirit works, is Isaiah 58, six through 11. And it says, it's not this the fact, if, if not, is not this the fast that I've chosen to loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens and let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out of the house, and thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thy own flesh? 
Then shall, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thy health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy re reward. Then shall thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away the midst of the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speak in vanity, and if thou draw thy soul to the hungry, and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday, and the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a water garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters fell not. So that verse right there, that is the epitome of storm riches in, in heaven. So if you want to ever go like, how do I store riches in heaven? How do I invest in heaven? Go back to Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. There's some nuggets in this passage, even how to uh, get healed and remain healed. Isaiah 58, 6 through 11. All right. That's how you store it. All right. You, you do things for the kingdom of God. You use your talent for the kingdom of, kingdom of God. I don't care if you don't really, let's say you just became a believer. You don't even know much. Hey, you can go on the street and help a poor person out. All right. You don't even, you don't, you probably don't even know what to say to say, Hey, you know what? I'm still learning, but Jesus loves you. Here's a burger. Here's some food. Here's some money. All right. So one of the main things is helping the poor. God loves it when you help the poor. Yes. The poor will be with us always. We can't get rid of that, but we can help. We can help. We can help an afflicted person. Right? We can help. We can use our money. When you have money, you have power now. All right? You can use your power. You can help people. If someone needs to go to college, you can pay for them to have a scholarship. So that's why you get rich. That's why you get wealthy. You get rich and wealthy to help people to do something in this world for somebody or multiple and millions of people. You don't get rich for your selfish needs. You don't get rich to hoard your money. It won't work. You get rich to be a beacon, a passage, a bridge, a road to helping people out. That's how you do it. That's how you store riches in heaven. Do things for God. All right? Do things in the name of God. Use your talents for God. Use your money for God. I'm not saying you can't enjoy yourself. I'm not saying you can't buy yourself rewards and all that. God gives you us the capacity to make money, to get wealthy. That's how the entire economy goes around as money. We all get, wake up and go to work. Because of money. Time is money. The reason why I'm recording this is because I spent money to record this. God knows that. He's, he's not saying you can't enjoy yourself. God said he'll give you the, the desires of your heart. But when you get rich, you have an obligation. You have a responsibility to help your fellow man. You have a responsibility to help God do what, do what he needs to do in this earth. God does what he needs to do. He helps him. He, he does it through men. Yes, he can do it for himself, but he does it through men. So be that passageway that can help. Secondly, uh, you need to invest in yourself. I can't say this enough. I always say this. Invest in yourself. All right. God can't. He can, yes, God can use anybody, but to really use you, you, you need to uh, be valuable. I mean, if you're a valuable person, you have multiple talents, you learn things, you increase in things, you improve in articulation and everything. God can use you to really help people. You're a, a, a businessman and all that. Imagine you, you're a powerful businessman. You make a lot of money, you're a good person, you do good for people, and you're a man of God. That's a great life. God, I, God loves that. To be a man of God, to be a rich, wealthy person who help, helps the poor, who gives to the church, who tithes, I think that's a perfect life. So those are the two investments that you should make. Store up your riches in heaven, invest in heaven, and invest in yourself. 
I think if you get those two down, I think your life will be great. It's simple that I'm saying this, but many people may make it hard to do. Many people will let money rule them. And money will be their God instead of, instead of being their tool. And that's the fastest way to destruction. And I pray that from watching this video, you know, Christians who watch this video now and, you know, five years, four years later, you guys are wealthy and, um, and you're invested in, in many things. But I pray that you come across this. But even if you're rich right now, I pray you come across this video. If you've been investing in many things, but you have not been investing in the kingdom of God. I hope that you, you start doing that now. That you change your ways. You know, remember, because it's like we're we're in the game, but we're not watching the game because we're just in it. Remember this life. This life is not very long. It's. 76 years or whatnot, and then you're gone. All right? So then you transition to heaven. And if you've been storing riches here, you've been investing smartly. Because sometimes you, a lot of people are very smart. They invest in stock markets. They, and, I mean, they invest in bonds, mutual funds. They, they invest in different businesses, and they have payoffs. They have rewards from doing that. Well, if you invest in the kingdom of God, you're making rewards not only for this life right now, because here you reap what you sow, but also for the life to come. So it's, it makes it makes sense. Invest in both. I'm talking to you, a rich guy, right now. Invest in both. Invest. <laughs> invest in what will what will um. If you invest in God, you invest in them both. All right, invest and you reap what you sow. So invest what will advance you in this world right now, and invest, and it'll also uh, it'll also benefit you in the world in the world to come. All right. So don't don't. So if you haven't done it before, start trying to do it now. You know, put money to the poor. Go to church, tithe, do things in the church, use your talents at the church. Be a good person. Be a philanthropist. Travel, do things for people. And and see how your rewards won't, won't rack up. See how your rewards, I mean, see how your rewards will, will rack up and have. You have rubies, you have everything. When you make that transition, and you'll, you'll be happy that you listen to this video. And secondly, is the is to improving yourself uh, to be used mightily God needs you to be pretty good now I'm not saying that he can't God can use anybody but I'm pretty sure it's better you know how God used Paul Paul was well versed he could talk he could speak he can write and see how he used him and how much Paul had an impact he was a very learned man um, so what with you, the talents that God's given you, when you improve them, you can really, really be impactful, not only on this earth, but also for the kingdom of God. So always focus on improving yourself. Always focus on going to the next level. Don't doubt and work hard. That's what God told me about even my business. And he said, don't doubt and work hard. So don't doubt and work hard and you guys be blessed.